I was wrong. Very wrong. Given the current line of games for the Switch along with past experience, I was sure that the next big 3D Zelda game wouldn't be revealed until next year, especially since we still have The Link's Awakening to look forward to. But here we are, with the confirmation of a Breath of the Wild sequel in the works. Not only that, but gameplay footage? I don't think I've ever been this excited from an announcement. The first game was fantastic, even with the few flaws. The trailer itself had quite a bit while at the same time being subtle. It's clear that development has just begun, though the fact that we got footage is more than enough. So let's break down this minute of footage to find all its secrets. First of all, there's no time in which a release date or year is shown. I suppose they learned their lesson the last time they did that. If you remember, the short sneak peek of Breath of the Wild had a release date of 2015. And you all know how that went. It will probably take at least until 2021 for the game to launch. Or possibly even longer. You could argue that because the world is already made, it won't take as long to make. But aside from one shot of Hyrule Castle Rising, we don't know how much the world will play into the game. It's possible that it won't be the main setting for the game, and that is made much more clear from the trailer. The main chunk of the game seems to take place somewhere underground. The first thing you're probably going to notice is how much darker this game is compared to the original, literally as well as mood-wise. It's Breath of the Wild graphics, but with the dark themes of Twilight Princess or Majora's Mask. It seems a bit more focused on the former game if you ask me. The first important detail doesn't come from the trailer's video, but the sound. There's a distinct heartbeat that can be heard. I'll return to this detail much later as it's fairly important. It begins with a shot of these strange green particle effects. Something similar is seen in the original game, though these particles are distinctly blue. It's the color green that is very strange. The next shot shows these same particles, but now we get to see the entire room. The walls of this location are worth noting given the fact that spikes appear to be protruding outwards. This design has been seen before, but strictly on Malice within Breath of the Wild. And if you look at the floor, there is what looks to be Malice. Upon closer inspection, it's clear that the substance isn't going towards the center, but away from whatever appears to be its source. We get a close-up of a wall lit by a torch, and this is where things get interesting. There are some drawings that can be seen on the rock, and after doing some image altering, the pictures become much more clear. There appears to be at least five people riding on horses, one of which possibly being Ganondorf. But what's more interesting is the weapon he is holding. It's not a sword, but a spear. One that is very similar to Mipha's light scale trident. While Ganon's Gerudo form has never been depicted with a trident, he has shown wielding it countless times in his beast form. But then again, does that mean that this really is Ganondorf? If the picture were to align with the past games, this shouldn't be the Gerudo form of him. Another shot is shown of the malice and green particles, which by the way appear to be forming some sort of symbols or words. Maybe Gerudo or Hylian script though it resembles the latter a bit more. I'll have a look more into it later on. A bunch of new stuff is seen in the next shot, as we get a glimpse of Zelda and Link. They seem to be exploring some dark room that I don't believe to be the same as the chamber from the first shot. The princess appears to be on some sort of animal that might be a water buffalo, hat no cow, or great horned rhinoceros. Or it's an entirely new species exclusive to this game. There are some tools and equipment strapped onto the animal, though the only one I could recognize was the axe. A couple of glowing crystals are seen that never made an appearance in the first game, though it could be a new form of Luminous Stone as that does have glowing-like attributes. Ratchon also makes an appearance, but don't get too attached to him since he's about to die. One of the interesting parts from this trailer though is the architectural design on the walls. This could be a connection to the Zonai tribe as plenty of locations feature similarly designed structures. Given how little we know about this tribe, having their backstory play a more prominent role in the sequel would make sense. We're now back at the first room where we get a much closer look at Zelda and Link. One of the first things you'll notice is how Zelda's hair is much shorter, so sometime before this she had it cut. It might seem like a strange thing to do, but this is a great example of showing her character development she went through in the first game. In Japan, the act of cutting hair also has a much more important meaning. It's looked at as an end to an era of someone's life and the beginning of another. It's Zelda starting all over and living the life she wants, not the one expected from her. 
We can also confirm that Link does have his Master Sword as it's seen with him. And both characters are wearing their iconic outfits. Zelda's research clothes and Link's champion tunic. As well as some very edgy capes. The camera is also much closer to whatever is in the center of the chamber, as well as the sources for both the light particles and malice. The next scene consists of a lawn shot with a bird's eye point of view. First of all, this deconfirms the idea that the animal is a great horned rhinoceros. There are some more structures with weird designs and patterns this time looking even more similar to one seen from Zonai structures. Zelda is also seen drinking some water. I guess her thirst for Link just can't be quenched. Speaking of Link, he appears to be getting something out of one of the pouches. It appears that a malice-like substance is creeping towards the two characters. Also, Rip Ratchon, you will be missed. The next shot shows our heroes on a bridge. It might not look like much, but there is one detail you might have missed. If you take a closer look, there is a broken part of the bridge that Link and Zelda are trying to get the animal across, her pulling from the front while he tries to push its back. We can conclude that they fail to get this creature to move, as they are seen later without it. It makes sense narrative-wise. Also, if you haven't noticed, this portion of the trailer was edited to make it look like one scene. But in reality, two things are going on. One is the shots of what is in the central room, while the others are Zelda and Link making their way to its location. The next scene doesn't have much in it, but the details lie in the facial expressions. Zelda and Link have clearly found something of importance. And when Zelda gasps, you can see Link turn his head to focus on the princess. It's possible that Zelda knows more about what she's seen than Link does, explaining why he focused on her reaction. And something else I failed to notice beforehand is how one of the Malice Tentacles is making its way up. In fact, you can also see it in the first shot. Things get more intense as we are finally given close-up shots of what is in that room. The hair on this person seems to be a red color as well as some jewelry with the Gerudo symbol, something that isn't seen only once as the next shot reveals another one. This could be where his Gerudo form lay during the events of Breath of the Wild, as we never actually see it. A very brief shot finally shows us what is on this mummified figure's head, a hand that appears to be holding the person down. There's also a very strange design on it, which might be related to the Sheikah in some way. From everything shown, it's possible that this hand acts as a seal to keep whatever evil that lurks here at bay. Thus begins a sequence of very short shots, but each with some very interesting details. First of all, from seeing this figure's pose, it looks somewhat similar to how Ganon was after being sealed away by the Master Sword in Wind Waker. I don't think this means anything as the similarity is small, but it's still an interesting detail. Link's hand lights up and he pulls it back right after. This implies that he reached out and touched something for this to happen. It's possible that he touched the seal or even the figure being sealed, possibly breaking said seal that was put onto whatever lay in the middle of the chamber. This theory is backed up with the next shot, as the malice-like substance shoots up the structure positioned at the top of the room. This is also a great time to point out how it looks very similar to the thing above the Shrine of Resurrection. Perhaps this is the evil version of the shrine, with the structure housing this person rather than Link. Zelda is then seen reaching for Link's hand. We know this because of the different designs of their sleeves. There's this extreme lawn shot of some sort of temple, which we can assume is the location that this is all taking place in. Or perhaps it's an entrance to a traditional Zelda dungeon. Again, it could be something that was built by the Zonai. Once again, we see a hand reaching out to another, but in this case, it's Link's arm being grabbed. And the hand that does the reaching and grabbing appears to be the same that was holding the figure down. But we get to see a bit more of it. What's interesting is how the fingers resemble characters from two different parts of Breath of the Wild. The Shiga monks, with the best example being from Mascotia, and on Calamity Ganon. Whatever it is, it presumably saved Link from falling. The next shot is one of my favorites though, as you can see shadows on the walls depicting the same hand grabbing a suspicious figure. But if you look closely, the seal is still active on the mummified person. This makes me believe that the flash of light and shadows are showing what happened in Hyrule's forgotten past. It's showing how this individual was sealed away by the owner of this hand, most likely for his malicious acts. And going back to the drawings on the wall and the Gerudo symbols, the chances that this is Ganondorf are quite high. The next two shots are presumably of the same scene as the ground shakes by Link's feet and we see Zelda fall down. Chances are that this is why she reached for Link's hand in the previous shot. This also might have nothing to do with the events in the other room, and more so when they were exploring. It looked like Link was observing one of the walls in a room, 
perhaps the same wall shown in the previous shot. The next scene shows Zelda focusing on the figure's hand, which twitches similar to the one from Mock Maz Koshia. The princess proceeds to turn around in the next shot, which for some reason is adorable. But then we find out why she most likely turned around as what was once a lifeless corpse regains mobility, looks at her, and has glowing eyes. The seal seems to be broken. I'd also like to add that I may have figured out this order of events. Link and Zelda explore the cave and come across a figure being sealed, one that may be Ganondorf. Link reaches out and touches it, but upon doing so the seal is broken. The cave begins to shake, causing both Zelda and the mummified figure to fall down. Link also falls, but he is caught by the hand that once sealed the creature. After Zelda lands in the chasm below, she looks in horror as the creature wakes up. Though this isn't completely without plot holes, as the continuity of each scene could be questioned. The next shot in the trailer will look familiar, as we see the world of Hyrule from the first game. It appears to be a view of Hyrule Castle from the Great Plateau, which proceeds to rise up for some unexplained reason, probably the aftermath of whatever was sealed. Which, by the way, the chamber shown in the very beginning is most likely right under the castle. There is even a good chance that it has to do with the shaking in the cave. And we finally conclude with a final shot of the light particles. But remember that beating heart at the beginning? Well, it once again plays at the very end, but much faster. It's most likely symbolic of an ancient evil that is finally waking up after being dormant for thousands of years. And that's the very first trailer for the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. A few more things I'd like to talk about before wrapping up the video. I feel like a bunch of unanswered questions from the first game may be finally addressed in its sequel. I think the Zonai tribe will play a much more prominent role in this game compared to the other, and that it's possible the figure sealed isn't even Ganondorf. But like I said before, that's all for another video. Also, strangely enough, there was no sign of a Sheikah Slate, which is very interesting, as well as a lack of Sheikah technology or structures related to said technology. There is also the plot point of Divine Beast Varuta not working from the previous game, and I believe that may tie into the beginning of the sequel. I think we might get an answer for what the laboratory was used for, as it might play a bigger role in this game. I also think we'll get more answers as to why the Shrine of Resurrection exists, as even Zelda questioned its purpose. In fact, I think it's very possible that it will be a part of some big conspiracy theory or something. It existing solely to heal a person's injuries seems a bit odd. And of course, we can't forget how the one in the sequel bears a resemblance to the one in the medical facility. Anyways, I'm excited if you couldn't tell. And I'm looking forward to covering more of this in the future. Breath of the Wild was a great game, and I'm sure that this one will be just as good. Maybe even better. Special thanks to all my patrons, as your support is very much appreciated. Check the link below if you too want to donate. Though never feel obligated to do so. I've been Nintendo Black Crisis, and I'll see you guys later.